Hello students, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be studying about the factors that are affecting the fluorescence and the phosphorescence. Okay, there are several factors that are affecting uh, these two fluorescence and phosphorescence. Okay, we will be studying one by one. The first the factor is the nature of the molecule. Okay, the first factor is nature of molecule. Now, we know that not all the molecule can exhibit the fluorescence or phosphorescence, right? Only few molecules that are having conjugated double bond, okay, that are having conjugated double bond can exhibit the phenomenon of fluorescence and phosphorescence because these conjugated double bond molecules or compounds that are having conjugated double bond can absorb okay it can absorb either uv or visible radiation okay so what we can conclude we can conclude that the molecules that can absorb the uv or visible radiation gives the process or phenomena called as fluorescence and phosphorescence now which molecule absorb uv radiation the molecules that are having conjugated double bonds now if you consider benzene so here you can see the double bond is present uh, in alternative way. means um, this is a double bond this is a single bond this is double bond right this system is called as the conjugated system okay similarly if you consider this okay here also you can see conjugated double bond so these systems or these compounds are capable of absorbing uv or visible radiation and hence they can show fluorescence and phosphorescence while if you have these particular compounds okay this is an a uh, simple cyclic compound or cyclohexane or if you consider some uh, alkanes okay not having any uh, pi bonds right so only sigma bonds are there these compounds cannot show fluorescence and phosphorescence because in these compounds we can have sigma to sigma star transition right because they have only have sigma bonds so we can expect only sigma to sigma star transition even in this case also the same transition so we know that for this particular transition energy required is very more right uh, means um, the energy required for this particular transition is very high that is why this particular compounds cannot uh, you know absorb uv or visible radiation and they do not show fluorescence and phosphorescence while in this compound which type of transition is observed usually pi to pi star transition right now um, if there is any um, groups like this okay like this we have there is a lone pair of electron right so in such cases uh, there is a possibility of a transition from n to pi star okay n to pi star transition is also possible okay if there is a lone pair of uh, uh, electrons on the groups okay so we have to transition for these to transition the energy required is very less hence these uh, compounds can absorb uv or visible radiation very easily and hence they show fluorescence of phosphorescence okay this is the first factor the second factor we are studying is the nature of the substituents okay like uh, if you have uh, say this is a benzene okay this is the benzene i'm writing now suppose if you have some electron donating group okay if you have what electron donating group okay like what like if you have amines okay nh2 or if you have oh let me write here okay you if you have oh groups then what happened the elect these uh, are being electron donating how because we know there is a presence of lone pair over nitrogen as well as oxygen here so this pair of electron can be donated like this so these groups are referred to as what electron donating group so whenever you have electron donating group in the system then the fluorescence increases okay so whenever electron donating groups are there it will increase the fluorescence while electron withdrawing groups okay electron withdrawing groups like what like if you have carbonyl or carboxylic group or even nitro groups right so if you have like this this is carboxyl group even the nitro groups no2 or azal groups all these or uh, electron withdrawing group and hence the fluorescence intensity decreases okay but groups like this 
if you have groups like this that is sulfonic acid group or if you have some alkyl group or, or in I just write R, R means what alkyl group like uh, ethyl, methyl all this thing okay if you have these groups then there is no effect over fluorescence or phosphorescence okay whenever you have sulfonic acid group methyl group or uh, simply an alkyl group then it do not affect uh, uh, anything uh, uh, like uh, they do not decrease or they do not increase means they do not have any effect over fluorescence or phosphorescence okay now suppose if you consider um, benzene okay if you consider benzene we know that these are all carbons having uh, uh, connected to one hydrogen right they are all connected to one hydrogen and if you can uh, replace one of the H by some heavy atom or uh, I can say high atomic number species okay now imagine this is the high atomic number species other than uh, hydrogen okay we know hydrogen is having the least atomic number and if you replace the least atomic number by some high atomic number species in the pi system okay it must be a pi system and if you replace the uh, some lower atomic number species by high atomic number species then the phosphorescence increases but the fluorescence reduces okay what happened whenever you replace the the lower atomic number species by a higher atomic number species in what in the pi system it should be a spy system then what happened to the phosphorescence it increases but the fluorescence reduces okay this is about the nature of substituent what happened here if you have electron donating group fluorescence increases electron withdrawing group fluorescence decreases so what group have no effect over fluorescence or phosphorescence it is sulfonic acid group or it may be an alkyl group okay if you replace hydrogen or lowest atomic number by highest atomic number species then phosphorescence increases but fluorescence reduces okay this is the second factor is affecting then the next is the effect of pH means how the pH of the solution is affecting the fluorescence and phosphorescence okay for this we will be taking the example of phenol and anisole okay the phenol this is the phenol and uh, I'm writing anisole now. Anisole means OCH3, okay, attached to a benzene ring. Okay, this is the anisole and the other one is a phenol, okay. Now, it is found that these two system is showing the fluorescence, okay, F means a fluorescence, okay. It, these two systems are showing the fluorescence at the pH of 7 okay at the pH 7 what happened these two systems are showing the fluorescence but if you consider other than pH 7 like if you consider uh, pH uh, uh, 12 for example okay that means higher than this right so whenever you consider a basic pH what happened is that this phenol exists like this like uh, anion okay the phenol is existing like a uh, like an anion while the anisole remains as such there will be no changes in the structure of uh, anisole so the phenol it was uh, uh, showing the fluorescence at pH 7 but once it, uh, pH is changes to the 12 this phenol or uh, the anion that formed is not showing any fluorescence while well, this means the fluorescence okay now if we consider the aniline okay aniline and uh, once again the same uh, anisole this is aniline and this is the anisole okay and it is it is not that these two things or systems are showing the fluorescence at the pH of 7 as well as at the 12 okay at the pH 7 and 12 this amines and this anisole is showing the fluorescence but if you consider um, other than uh, this pH means if you consider pH uh, say 14 means uh, basic pH higher than 12 right so if you consider basic pH what happens is that this uh, aniline is there no that will exist like anion okay NH minus okay and at pH 2 okay at pH 2 means acidic pH if you consider acidic pH what happens is that that aniline will be existing like a cation NH3 
plus while this uh, anisole is there now that will remain same there will be no change in the structure of anisole but this anilin changes structure when the ph of the solution changes okay at ph 14 it will be forming anion while at the ph 2 it is forming um, cation okay these two systems are not showing the fluorescence okay so what happens at the ph as the ph of the system or solution changes the fluorescence the property of some of the molecule also changes like phenol here it is anilin right why it is happening because it is mainly because of change in the structure if you look into these groups what are these group actually these groups are nothing but a chromophores right these are nothing but a chromophore we know what is chromophore right if you have chromophore its the color intensity is increased but if the structure of those chromophore is destroyed by the ph what happened its the fluorescence intensity is also vanishes or reduces right that is why this or this is not showing the fluorescence because of change in the structure of the chromophores okay this is about about the effect of ph the next factor that is affecting the fluorescence and phosphorescence is the dissolved oxygen okay now what is dissolved oxygen oxygen that is dissolved in water is called as dissolved oxygen okay what is dissolved oxygen oxygen dissolved in the water so why oxygen is dissolved in water what is the uh, or uh, what the use of dissolved oxygen the dissolved ox oxygen is very necessary for the aquatic life like fishes they survive by breathing this dissolved oxygen means oxygen that is dissolved in water no that is very important for the aquatic life okay in the polluted water the dissolved oxygen will be very less and hence the fishes or any other aquatic life uh, may not survive in such a polluted water because of deficiency of dissolved oxygen in it now we will see how this dissolved oxygen is affecting the fluorescence or phosphorescence of the uh, system or substance okay now we have two points to be remembered here one first point is here if you see oxygen okay oxygen means what oxygen is nothing but a very good oxidizing agent right so oxidizing agent okay oxygen is being a very good oxidizing agent what happen it may oxidize your system okay it may oxidize your compound right oxidize the compound okay uh, since oxygen is being a oxidizing agent it may oxidize your compound so that it may turn your uh, compound non fluorescent material okay non fluorescent material Okay, by oxidizing it, it is converting the uh, compound into a non-fluorescent material. Okay, that is the first point that we should be remembering. The second point that you should remember is the oxygen is a paramagnetic species, right? The oxygen molecule O2 is a paramagnetic species because there is a presence of uh, unpaired electron. If you write the MOT diagram of O2, there is a presence of unpaired electron that is the reason why o2 molecule is the paramagnetic species okay now what happens if you have a paramagnetic species in a solution so if you have a paramagnetic species in a solution then it will favors it will favors inter-system crossing okay whenever you have the paramagnetic species what happens? it will promotes the inter-system crossing what is inter-system crossing? Inter-system crossing means what? If you consider this is the singlet ground state, this is the singlet excited state, I call it as S1, S0, sorry, this is S1, I can say this is an excited and you have a triplet state also, right? Uh, like this T, T1, okay, same number, T1, okay, or you can write triplet state simply. Okay, this is a triplet state. Now, inter-system crossing means what? If you have an electron here, okay? If you have electron in an excited singlet state, then this electron can promote to this level, that is triplet state. That uh, uh, crossing is there, no? From the singlet excited to the triplet excited state is called as inter-system crossing, okay? So, whenever you have a paramagnetic species, it will favors the inter-system crossing. If the electrons are uh, crossing to the triplet state, what happened to the fluorescence? The fluorescence vanishes, right? Fluorescence means what? 
Fluorescent means if the electron in the excited single state come to the ground state by giving the radiation, then that is what we call the fluorescence. Okay, fluorescence means what? If you have electron in an excited singlet state and if it come back to the singlet ground state, then uh, if it gives a radiation, that is what we call fluorescence. Now, if the electron is uh, jumping from singlet excited state to the triplet excited state, then we cannot uh, observe this process, means fluorescence process is not observed. Okay, so maybe we are observing the phosphorescence here because uh, electrons are present here, it is coming to the ground state, singlet ground state by giving the radiation. If it gives a radiation, it is uh, called as phosphorescence, right? So, uh, this is what effect of dissolved oxygen. So, if uh, first point is what uh, oxygen is being a very good oxidizing agent, it may oxidize your compound. So, it may turn the compound into a non fluorescent material. And next is the paramagnetic species. So, if there is a presence of paramagnetic species, it will favor the intersystem crossing so that the fluorescence vanishes or intensity of fluorescence reduces. Okay, this is ab about the effect of dissolved oxygen. The next the fifth one we have is the effect of temperature. Okay, the fifth factor is the effect of T. Okay, T means the temperature. Okay, now what happens if you have higher temperature? Say this is the ground state. Okay, say let me, yeah, this is a ground state, singlet ground state. This is your singlet excited state. Okay, excited state, and along with this, you have the triplet uh, excited state also okay and imagine you have a, a, a you know electrons in the ground state initially but once you rise the temperature okay effect of temperature means what if you rise the temperature what happen these electrons gains the energy and they will go to the excited state so in the excited state you have more number of uh, electrons right because once you rise the temperature more number of electrons gains the energy and they jump to the excited state and hence their concentration in the excited state will be more okay because of this uh, higher concentration of electron in the excited state what happen is that these electrons may collide with each other okay they may collide with each other and they come to the ground state by not giving a radiation or I can say they are coming to the ground state by a radiation less pathway okay this is what uh, temper uh, how the temperature is affecting the fluorescence okay if you rise the temperature what happened more number of electron gains the energy and they go to the excited state because of higher concentration of electron in the excited state there may be a collision between them and because of the collision they come to the ground state by not giving any radiation okay instead they may be giving heat okay uh, that's how means uh, that's how we cannot uh, see any fluorescence in this process okay only the radiationless pathway is followed if you rise the temperature uh, we have left with the last factor that is the effect of structural rigidity means it is very simple if uh, the structural rigidity is more then the fluorescence will be more that's it okay if the structural rigidity is increased for some compound then what happened to the fluorescence that also increases okay we will give an example uh, if you consider this biphenyl okay this is a biphenyl and if you consider a fluorine this is fluorine okay fluorine f l u o r e n e okay this is a fluorine compound this is the biphenyl compound if you look into the structure they only differs at this position means here there is a, um, open right here it is closed so there is a ring here means it is uh, increasing the structural rigidity correct so that will be increasing the structural rigidity in this case while there is no structural rigidity here so because of that reason the fluorine has more fluorescence or it will exhibit uh, a uh, higher intensity of the fluorescence than the biphenyl okay mainly because of what structural rigidity in that um, compound okay and because of that reason the fluorescence will be higher for this while for uh, this it is this okay it is found that quantum efficiency is there now the quantum efficiency pi uh, for this fluorine is this one okay 1 1.0 for this it is least that is around 0.2 only okay quantum efficiency is very least 
because there is no structural rigidity here quantum efficiency is more because of structural rigidity okay these are the factors that are affecting the fluorescence and phosphorescence okay if you have any doubt in this class you can ask me in the comment section okay hope you enjoyed the class thank you